Hey class, I hope you're doing well today. We're gonna pick up where we left off. Remember that they were in line and they were wondering why everyone was stopped and we were trying to predict why that was. And it was because they came to the Mississippi River. So how are they gonna cross that? And that's kind of what we're gonna find out, I think, today. The Mississippi River. Soft rain ran too, and was breathless by the time she caught up with her brother. They were nearly at the front of the line. Hawk Boy was talking to a chief, a familiar looking chief. Smiling, the chief said, soft rain. You were eating warm bread in the barn when I saw you last. It is good to see you. Well, who is this young man? H Hawk Boy, M my brother Hawk Boy, she stammered. You found your father, the chief asked. We found her, Hawk Boy boasted, straightening his shoulders, and I found her doll. Soft Rain nodded. What is happening? She asked. We are at the Mississippi River. It's wide and there's too much ice for us to cross, the chief answered. Can't we walk over the ice? Hawk Boy asked. No, there's too much ice for the fairies and not enough for the heavy wagons and animals, the chief explained. Others are here ahead of us, and more will certainly come before any group can cross. I fear our wagons and tents are a little protection from the chilling winds. I was on my way to tell your leaders of our situation. Our father is a leader, but he's out looking for game, Soft Rain said. I will tell him when he returns. Tell him the leaders will meet to decide how far from each other to camp and where to dig the trenches and where to bury the dead. Another river, more dead. Soft Rain shivered. Taking her blanket, the chief refolded it and placed it over both children's shoulders. Go to your mother, Soft Rain. Try to get warm. Your lips are turning blue. As they started back, Hawk Boy sighed. It will be good to stop. I'm tired of walking. But he was wrong. Stopping was not good. Even though the fires were tended constantly, the cold blast of wind bit into their skin and blew firebrands onto the tent roofs. Soft rain screamed as two children barely escaped from a burning tent. See, the firebrands, I think, means fire embers off of the fire and landed on it and it made the other family's tent burn and they had to run out. For most of each day, the people huddled shivering under blankets. At least Soft Rain's feet were warmer. The young chief had brought her shoes. One afternoon, when Hawk Boy was whining, Soft Rain gathered some small twigs. We can write words with them, she told her little brother. He shook his head. I'm too tired for words. I want to sleep. Late in the day, he awoke screeching because Mother was trying to move him to a wagon. I won't be in a wagon. Sick people are in wagons. I don't want to die. Mother made him as comfortable as possible on the ground, but he had become ill. Throughout the bitterly cold day, he sweated. Keep him covered, Mother told Soft Rain every time he tossed off the blanket. He doesn't know what he's doing. He needs more strength, better food, Mother, Mother murmured to Aunt Key. She nodded. We all do. The next day, Aunt Key disappeared. Soft Rain went from fire to fire, searching and asking for her. Father rode through the whole camp looking. She wouldn't just wander off to try to go back home the way some people have, Mother said. Frantically searching through Aunt Key's bundle, her basket is gone, but nothing else. Where can she be? Two days later, Aunt Key reappeared carrying a full basket. Her hands were bleeding and her dress was torn. What happened, Soft Rain asked. Aunt Key's eyes closed in exhaustion as she sank to the ground. She explained, I walked far and climbed many fences until I found a farmer's field with some vegetables still in the ground. It isn't stealing if he has left them. With a rock, I dug them up. Now we can make stew, a nourishing warm meal. When the stew was ready, Soft Rain chewed slowly savoring each bite. Then she fed Hawk Boy. By morning, he was sitting up asking for more. Later, father came with important news. The ice is breaking up on the river. One group starts crossing today. 
Soon, we'll move our camp closer to the river to await our turn. By the time they had moved all the way to the river's edge, Hawk Boy was well again. For days, they watched the groups cross and listened to the boatmen shout at the ice, the fast-moving water, and the frightened people. Soft rain threw the blanket over her head when a great chunk of ice overturned the last group's raft. But she couldn't block out the screams of those who were thrown into the icy river. Hawk Boy watched and whimpered. More people have died. I will not be afraid to cross, Soft Rain told herself. Father will be with us. And then Father seemed to be everywhere, helping with the wagons, talking with reluctant people who huddled, waiting and moaning, meeting with other leaders. Hawk Boy seized Mother's hand and began crying when it was time to step on the boat. We will all be together, Mother reassured him. Are you going with us, Father? Soft Rain asked, looking into Father's eyes. No, you will go ahead of me. I will see everyone across and be on the last boat. Not the last boat, Soft Rain screamed inside her head. She bit her lip to keep from crying. Wrapping his arms around her, he said, Don't worry, it will be a boat, not a raft. And on the other side, as soon as possible, I will form a hunting party. So you won't see me for a while. Soft Rain didn't cry. She walked onto the boat next to Aunt Key. Close your eyes, she told Hawk Boy. When the boatman pulled the last rope on board, she realized that she had grown to fear the icy water more than she feared the Uptima. The ice she could see and hear. The boat creaked, the wagons creaked, and the ice creaked. Soft rain held her hands over her ears and tried to keep her eyes closed, but the ice continuously buffeted the boat. With every lurch, she had to seize the rail to keep from falling or bumping into someone. Hawk Boy clung to Mother's hand until they were off the noisy boat. Joining those already on shore, they stood waiting for the next boat to arrive. Was it the last one? Would Father be on it? Soft Rain saw a raft and a boat heading for shore. She lost sight of the boat when she was jostled into the crowd of people who were being led away from the landing to make room for others. Squeezing to one side of the crowd, she climbed onto a barrel, not moving until the boat landed, and she saw Father lead his horse off. So that's great news. What a wonderful chapter. They got across the Mississippi River. Her brother didn't die. Um, they were able to get him a little food, and Father helped everybody else across and made it across. And again, we're returning to that theme. The Father could have went on with his family. But he chose, it was a tragic time, he chose to help everyone else instead. And so that just reinforces what we've been talking about. When things get hard and things are tragic, there's still good there. There are people that are going to do amazing and wonderful things. And you're going to be those people that do those amazing and wonderful things when things are hard for other people. Um, and so just keeping that in mind and we'll read the next chapter next time. Bye.